Hello everybody, my name is Kevin, I'm from UMass Dartmouth, and because I'm the only one in the kitchen, I'm going to take my mask off, because I can't see with the glasses on. But normally if we were in the kitchen with a bunch of people, I'd have to have my mask on. So for all of you out there, we thought we were going to do monkfish today, but we talked to our fish purveyors the last two weeks, and because everyone's aware of the strong hurricane season, the seas have been very rough out in the North Atlantic, and no monkfish has been landed. So we went with another fish that is a little common, but it's still underutilized, and it's called pollock. This is a whole side, a whole fillet of pollock right here. So I buy it like this, okay? And then we're gonna portion this. We're gonna saute some vegetables. All of this is local vegetables. We'll saute the vegetables while the fish is in the oven, and we'll take the fish out of the oven, we'll plate it, we'll take the fresh vegetables, and we'll go over the top. So what we really wanna do here, because we want to take the tail off a little bit, okay? Just the very, very end, okay? So we want to make, usually for dinner, it's probably a five or six ounce portion. Lunch is probably a four or five. So we'll take it from the here. We'll go one here. There's one portion. There's two. This can be three portions right here, about the same. I have another whole side. Don't be afraid to buy the whole side in the market. It's much fresher than the pieces that were already cut. Again, we'll take the stub off the end. Three, four, five. So they're all pretty equally. You could cook the fish, the fish whole, but it's very easy to just portion it like this. I take a baking dish, or we can have a hot cast iron pan, whichever. I like to take some pep, some fresh spinach. Line the bottom of the pan with some spinach. You can also use a glass Pyrex uh, baking dish. We'll go like this, okay? I take a couple of pieces of butter, okay? A couple of pieces of butter, drop it inside the, inside the, with the spinach, okay? A little bit of salt and pepper on the spinach. Okay, now the fish, as you can see, some of these pieces are fatter. So you take the fish and you turn it over so it's the white side facing up, skin side down. White side facing up, skin side down like this. Now when you get to the end of the fish, which is very thin, fold it in half like that, and then you have a piece like that, and it adds to the same thickness as everything that's in the pot. And that way there, you don't get a dry piece of fish. It's nice that the pot is nice and small. Get everything in there nice and snug. Everything upside down like that, okay? We have our fish like that. We put a little salt and pepper on our fish, like this, okay? We're gonna get a fresh lemon, okay? Just cut the lemon in half like that. And we're just gonna make some halves like this. Okay, I scatter these on top. Okay, we have a little bit of butter in the bottom of the pan, which will create a great sauce for us. I'm gonna put some extra virgin olive oil on top, keep it moist, just like that. Okay, then when we head into the kitchen and we go put this in the oven, always, always add a half a cup of wine. White wine, blub, 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 blub. white wine is in, boom, the fish is in the oven. Now we come back to our task at hand over here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our pan on. You never put any food on a cold pan, okay? So we're gonna let our pan heat up a little bit. Let me remind you that here on campus at UMass Dartmouth, we have a hydroponic farm and we grow our own lettuce. And as you can see, our lettuce is beautiful. We've been growing it all. It comes with a little pod, little peat moss pod in the bottom. And it grows vertically in the trailer like this. It's not in the recipe today, but I'm proud of it and I want to show it off. Okay, we take our Spanish onion. We have big onions in the kitchen, big onions in the kitchen. Okay, we take the top off right here. Okay. Then leave this stub on. Okay, cut it down through the middle like this. Okay, we don't need this huge onion here. I'm going to take this outside ring off. 
You know what they say, once you peel the layers back, so when you really see what's going on, okay? There we go. The reason that I leave the end on is it holds the onion together for me, okay? So I wanna kind of cut everything about the same size so that if we cut them in big rings and you go to eat it, they slop off the spoon or the fork. So we really want everything to fit right on the spoon, a piece of fish and some of the vegetables. So what I'm gonna cut is like a, it's called a massia dome, but it's really like a half inch cut. So I'll hold this onion like this, okay? I'm just gonna cut down and the end will hold it together. Holding your hand up like this, just go through it a little bit like that. Fine. Hold it together, fingers in, and let the knife do all the work, just like that. Okay, we'll put them off to the side. Okay. I'm gonna take my pepper. All of these have been washed. This is the way I like to peel my peppers. It's simple, I come down like this. I come like this. I'm a thing, I don't like seeds. I don't like seeds on my cutting board and I don't like seeds in my food. Let's put this over here. Gather up what few seeds there are. There's all my peppers with no seeds. Just stack them up a little bit. Always use the end. There's nothing wrong with the end because we're gonna be sauteing it. Kind of look at the size of your, your onions. You want the same size, okay? Keep your fingers in, nice sharp knife. Down like that, turn it together. Let the knife do all the work. While you're working this, you're feeling your pan. Make sure your pan's getting where it was. Nice, getting hot. Again, more peppers. It's gonna be beautiful color. It's nice at this time of year, all these vegetables, okay? I have some tomatoes here. At this time of year, sometimes you don't get those perfect tomatoes that you see in the market all the time. But if you go to the farmer's market and you can get some irregular tomatoes, they have the most flavor, you know? And they're not going on a sandwich. We're gonna cut them up and they're gonna go in to the stew. Well, we're gonna call it saute. So I use the end of my knife and I'm just gonna cut the end out right here. Let's take that out like that, okay? Then we can turn the... Turn it over so it's sitting flat, nice and flat. And we can cut it right in half, okay? Go like this. Have the, have the tomato like that very easily. We just go through it like that. Hold it together. Don't push the knife hard. Let the knife do all the work. Straighten up like that. As you can see, almost everything's the same size. Again. The tomato lays flat. I'm gonna slide the knife through it nice and easily. I'm gonna come through it. This time of year, the tomatoes are amazing. They're right at the end of the season. And the flavors, especially if you're gonna cook them, put them in sautés, absolutely fabulous. And of course, at this time of year, why not use some apples? These apples are from Barden's Farm in Rhode Island. And have some nice apples in this too, okay? Check my pan so it's not getting hot, okay? So we wanna saute the onions and the peppers a little bit. If we saute the apples too long, they're gonna get mushy. So we're gonna add a little bit of oil to our pan. Once you add all the food into the frying pan, we want to turn it up a little bit because then it's drawing the heat up. Turn the heat up a little bit, okay? Of course, salt, pepper. And remember, we put the fish in the oven. We put the fish in the oven at 360. We put it in for about 18 minutes, 16 minutes. We'll go 16 minutes and check it because there's nothing worse than dried fish. With a little bit of wine and butter and the liquid that's in the spinach, it'll steam itself and that tends to make the fish a little bit more moist. Stand our apple up like this. 
We'll take the sides off. Okay. So here's a nice size right here. So we want to turn these over and make them all like that. Push them off to the side of your board. The most important thing is keeping your board nice and neat and clean. As you can see, no seeds. That's what I'm talking about right there. Too bad you can't smell that. Got a little smell of vision going on here. Okay. And then once I have my apples cut that way, I'm gonna put them this way here. And, and you can, you know, for those that don't drink wine or, or you choose not to have wine in your food, at this time of year, you could add about a half a cup of apple cider. So you add apple cider, spinach, a little bit of butter, fresh fish, don't be afraid of the whole filet. Slice it up, put it in, delicious. And then actually with a little bit of butter in the apple cider and the wine, that tends to turn into be a sauce. We have our apples ready. We want our apples to be hard. We want them to have a nice crunch. So this saute is probably maybe about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. So you probably, if you wanted to check this, you would taste the pepper. And if the pepper is not hard and raw, because the onions and the pepper will cook the same amount of time, the tomatoes will cook quicker. So you don't want to taste the tomato. Once the peppers start loosening up a little bit, throw your apples in. Okay. Just let that go a little bit. So while you're waiting, let this saute keep on going. All right, I'm gonna cut some lemons so that we can put them on the plate. So we wanna take the ends off. Okay, and we stand the lemon up like this. Nice, cut the lemon in half. Okay, and then it drops down nice and easy. And then cut in half again, and then cut in half again. In half, in half, in half. Okay. So there is going to be that's going to go on the uh, on the fish when we plate it. Okay. You can see this is looking very good. The apple. You know, you look at a lot of color, and there is red. If we could have got some green apples, that would have added more green to it. Okay. I get a little bit of zucchini. That is a very soft vegetable. Doesn't need a long saute time. I cut the end off, cut it like this. Again with me, cut it in half, and then it lays flat. Keep everything nice and flat. I'm gonna cut it twice. Okay, keep them together like this. And they're nice and easy. Again, a vegetable that we don't want to turn into mush. We want it to stay nice and fresh. Okay. We have some beautiful parsley from a local farm in Saunders Town. Look at the size of the leaves on that. Absolutely beautiful. When you buy fresh herbs at the market, you buy bunches like this, you would bring it home Damp paper towel, just roll it up. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit off right here. Cut it. So as this is cooking, as my fish is in the oven, we got almost like a little restaurant action going here. Everything in its, its own step. So now I'm not thinking about cooking the fish. I'm not thinking about sauteing, everything's going. My time is on in the oven. I don't have to worry about that. i clip off my hair. Pretty soon the chef's gonna be yelling, Time to plate, I'm ready. This is the way it works. I'm ready, chef. Take my parsley, get it ready. I'm gonna get some nice, thin, just let the knife do the work. 
up and down, sways right in and out like that. Beautiful. You can smell the freshness of that. Nice. If you roll it up, or if you use a dull knife and you squish it, then you're gonna wrinkle it and it loses its flavor. It gets really not very tasty, okay? I hear the timer going off in the oven. Let me go get the fish. Keep this stirred up. I'll be right back. Now that everything's come together, we have all our three pots here. We have our main ingredient, we have our vegetables, and we have our garnish, and we have our fresh lemon, and the sauce is right inside. The chef calls the plate, we gotta plate it up. So the plates are warm, okay? So we'll take the plate, okay? So we have all the spinach is in the bottom of the pan. We don't want all the water. Take the spinach. We have an awfully big piece here, an awfully big pan, so I'm gonna plate two, okay? And it's like that, okay? We take the vegetables, okay? Slide this over. You can see the vegetables are nice. So this, what actually works out nice here is that you don't always, you don't always need a starch. You know, we're all watching our weight, especially me. Okay, so we don't need the rice. So we're gonna put a few of the vegetables around the side. Okay, apples. In, whenever you're plating, you never hide the protein. You don't wanna hide the main ingredient. You just wanna highlight it. So we just put a little bit on top. Okay. Wipe it down and make it clean. All vegetables, all fresh vegetables in here. Throw a couple of, few lemons in here. Always work in odd numbers. You go with some fresh parsley. General rule of thumb is you try to keep the parsley off the side of the plate. So when the waiters and waitresses come in and run to your table, they don't have their thumb print. Here is pollock a la apple. Okay? We're gonna eat two of these, so I'm gonna plate up another one. Okay? If you don't mind. Okay, again, scoop it out. Nice and clean into the pan. Nice and clean. Very nice. So this has a little bit of butter. Has a little bit of wine, keep it in the bottom. So you think of the flavor that we have there. And we have the flavor coming right out of this pan. All the fresh vegetables. You know, if we have wine inside this, you can get creative. We could have threw a little apple cider in here, let it reduce down a little bit. We don't want to go all the way around the sides. We can make the, the vegetables up on one side like this. A little bit on top. that again lemons fresh parsley and here we go we have two dishes enjoy fresh fish thank you